All right, number one. Explain the basics of how light is emitted. So here's the basics of what's going on with light. So first of all, particles vibrate. And when they do that, they release energy. Specifically, they release light energy. So particles vibrate. When they do that, they release energy. And how fast they vibrate determines what type of light it is. So particles that vibrate really fast will release things like x-rays and gamma rays and ultraviolet and that sort of thing. Things that vibrate slowly will vi uh, release things like radio waves and infrared and microwaves and that sort of thing. So depending on how fast they vibrate, now all of them are vibrating fast thousands of times per second or something like that, um, or hundreds of thousands or more. Um, but depending on how fast they vibrate, it determines what type of light is released. Okay, so now I want to describe um, excitation. So here's it in complicated form, and then I'll kind of draw it for you. So electrons absorb energy at specific frequencies. It causes them to increase the energy level of the electron. They can't stay there, and so then they decrease their energy level, and when they do that, they give off energy. So let's, that's a lot. So let's draw pictures. Okay. So here's your nucleus. Here's the energy levels of the atom. And here's a little an electron orbiting around. Okay? What happens is energy comes in. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -doop doop Yep. You may not have known that before, but that's what it sounds like. So the energy comes in and it hits that particle. That electron is now going to gain energy. And if it's the right frequency of light, which we'll assume it is, it's going to jump up an energy level. And now it's not in the lower energy level, it's in the higher energy level. Now, the thing is, it can't stay there. It can't stay there. Because eventually, that energy needs to be released. And so what happens is it jumps back down. And when it does, it releases the energy again. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Yep. That's how light is produced. So light is produced, energy comes in, thing jumps energy levels, frequency is given off based off of what it is. Okay? So if it vibrates at really high um frequencies it'll jump a lot of energy levels and so it'll give off a lot of energy when it jumps back down um, if it vibrates only a little bit it may just vibrate one or two energy levels and then it won't give off as high of energy it also depends on what the material is some materials will give off they just naturally will have higher energy levels and some will nat naturally have lower energy levels um, interestingly enough, this is what happens with the sky. This is why the sky is blue. So the sky is blue because blue light scatters. But the reason it scatters is because the blue light comes in, hits the particle, causes the particle's energy to jump. The particle's energy jumps back down, and it releases the blue light in random directions. And so the blue light goes everywhere instead of going in straight lines. Things like red and orange pass right through without doing anything to the electrons, and so they travel in a straight line. Isn't that like Rayleigh scattering or something? Yeah, it's called Riley scattering. Yep, and um, it's that's why it happens at low frequencies, or uh, low wavelengths. So low wavelengths have higher energy, and so they're the right energy for nitrogen and oxygen. 
Yeah. Is there one nuclear reactors are blue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sim similar kind of thing, I think. Um, has to do with the energy level. Um, interestingly enough, if you go to other planets or other moons and stuff that have atmospheres, their atmospheres will be different colors. So if you go to the uh, moon Titan, which goes around Saturn, um, its atmosphere, if you were to land on its surface, would be yellowish orange uh, because it's made up mostly of methane. Um, and... Uh, Methane produce, does this. Methane does this at like orange and yellow colors. I have to let you know next time. Next time you go to Titan. Yeah. Titan is very interesting. When we get when we get to astronomy, one of the topics you can pick for your project is uh, Titan. Titan is pretty interesting. It has like actual liquid. It has like actual liquid lakes. It has rain. Like it rains on Titan. Um, because it because no because the rain is methane. So it's flammable, um, and it smells like rotten eggs. Yeah. So, yeah, there is sulfur, too. There's sulfur on it. <laughs> Why doesn't Jeff Bezos own Titan? He might. He might, actually. All right, so how are energy fre and frequency related? So there's an equation for them, and the equation is E equals HF. Yeah. So E is energy. That one's probably pretty obvious. F is frequency. That one's also probably pretty obvious. And H is something called Planck's constant. Not Plankton's constant. So what this equation means is that the energy is dependent on the frequency. So things that have higher frequencies have more energy. So things like x-rays have more energy than radio waves. This is why things like x-rays and ultraviolet can um, harm your body, but things like radio waves can't. Radio waves don't have enough energy, so they don't hurt you. you can, right, right now, radio waves are passing through you, and it doesn't do anything. Okay. If x-rays were to pass through you constantly, you'd get cancer and stuff like that. That's why you're only allowed to have uh, there's government regulations on how many like chest x-rays you can have a year. I think it's two or three you're only allowed to have because anything more than that can help you develop cancer and stuff like that. So so don't get too many chest x-rays. It's not big. Sa Sam's what head. Superman? So is Superman giving everyone cancer? What? Cause wow. it, oh, because it's cause his x-ray vision. Because his x-ray vision. Come on. Depends on what frequency he's using. All right. What is Planck's constant, and what does it have to do with quantization? So we should talk about what quantization is now. Um, quantization is this um, concept that things, we'll talk about it more when we get down to uh, what is a quantum. Um, but it's basically this theory of how things are divided into their energy constituent components. Um, and like I said, we'll talk about more in a second. Um, so first of all, Planck's constant has a value. It's 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th. <laughs> yes. And that's because each individual particle has a small amount of energy. It's if you combine them into lots of particles that they'll have more energy. Um, but... What it has to do with quantization is basically energy comes in distinct levels. So for example, if the frequency, I'm just going to pick nice numbers, if the frequency is 10, then you can only go up in energy by whatever H is. Right? So if you go up to a frequency of 11, it's 11 times whatever H is. So you only get, so you don't have a whole range of energies. You have very specific amounts of energies. Okay. Um, emission spectrum and what it has to do with excit excitation and light energy. Um, this is a demo I'm hoping to do for you, but I can't find the stuff for it yet. Um, so... 
basically what uh, emission spectra are is when you excite particles, they only give off specific colors. They don't give off a rainbow. They give off very specific colors. And that has to do with what the material is and how much energy it has. So um, excited particles give off very specific colors. And it has to do with how many electrons they have, how much energy they have, what their energy level values are. It's based off a lot of complicated things, but that's the basics. Okay, so what's the origin of quantum theory? So the origin of quantum theory is they were trying to figure out what happens to really, 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 really small things. Because really, really small things seem to behave weird. Um, <laughs> That's right. So they're trying to figure out what happens to things that are really, really small. Um, and really, really small things behave in very specific ways. Um, and the ways are really, really strange. Really, really strange. And so we are trying to figure out um, what's going on with them. Um, and we notice that this idea of energy and frequency that seem to go with different particles and that sort of thing. Okay, so what is a quantum? So a quantum is a discrete. Discrete means a very specific. So discrete packet of energy. Think of it as like a single frequency of energy. Like one single wave of energy. Okay? And it's a very particular value. All right, so now we get into the last one on the front page and this is the last one we'll do for right now and then I'm going to move you on to the lab. Um, explain the photoelectric effect. So here's what the photoelectric effect was. What happened was they shined light on a surface. And sometimes that surface would release electrons. And so you could actually create an electric circuit by light shining on this metal. It's how um, solar power works. So solar power uses the photoelectric effect. So light from the sun shines on this material, and that material gives off electrons. That's why it's called green energy, because it has no byproduct, like nothing comes off of it. Um, it's not like nuclear power that gives off radioactive waste. It's not like coal that creates a lot of smoke and stuff like that. It's literally just electricity caused by sunlight. Um, but it only happened at very specific uh, frequencies. So it's the release of electrons... when certain light shined, shone, I don't know, shined on a material. <coughs> okay, so now Y'all are going to do the lab. So here's how the lab is going to work. 